Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to present a video tutorial on drying flowers. Throughout this process, we will provide you with some precautions and share a few tips, hoping it can be helpful for everyone. Drying flowers requires a crucial material, desiccant. It helps remove the moisture from the flowers during the drying process. When using a desiccant, it's important to prepare a container with a tight sealing lid. After allowing the flowers to dry, cover the container tightly with the lid. This helps expedite the dehydration process for the dried flowers. In addition, I've prepared a tool. I added a layer of mesh to a disposable cup. And you can see there are some holes in it. Then, use a rubber band to secure it. This turns it into a sieve. It can come into play when using the desiccant. Now, let's start by trimming the flowers to make the drying process more convenient. When trimming, it's recommended to leave a bit of the stem, and this makes it easier to handle and reduces the risk of damaging the petals. Leave a bit of the stem and make a diagonal cut. Trim the remaining flowers in the same manner. If you anticipate using leaves for later crops, you can also cut some for drying. Depending on our needs, you can even dry stems. The same method applies to larger roses and little daisies as well. Leave a bit of the stem and make a diagonal cut. Whether they are big or smaller flowers, don't waste. You can also cut down these beautiful leaves if you need them. This time, we primarily chose daisies. When selecting flowers, you can choose the ones to dry based on color coordination. Currently, these flower petals are very soft since they contain moisture. We need to dry out the moisture to make them brittle so that they can be preserved permanently. Today, let's use a small part of the flowers to demonstrate how to dry them. Set the flowers aside and take out a sealed drying box that is suitable for better drying the flowers. Then, spread a layer of desiccant on the bottom of the drying box. You can make it a bit thicker because we need to support the stems of the flowers. We can slightly adjust the shape of the flowers. For example, gently open some unopened petals and place them upright to adjust their positions and make them more secure. Then, place the flowers to be dried one by one into the box. Leave some space between them. Don't pack them too tightly. If they are too close, they may not dry properly, and there could be a risk of mold later on. Except for taller flowers, one layer should be enough. For the remaining space, you can place some smaller flowers. For thin petal flowers like this, a single layer of a desiccant is sufficient. Then you can add another layer of flowers and cover it with desiccant again. You can repeat this process for multiple layers. Now it's time to show off our homemade and very useful tool. We usually use this type of bagged desiccant to pour, but it tends to flatten and deform the flowers resulting in a less desirable outcome. So we've created a small tool that allow us to pour the desiccant more efficiently without distorting the flowers. Use the sieve to slowly pour the desiccant in. This way the desiccant can better fill the inside of the petals without flattening the flowers. Let's zoom in for a closer look at the details. As you can see, the pour desiccant is very fine, and its slow pouring speed allows for better feeling of the petals. It's advisable to wear a mask while drying the flowers, because the desiccant can produce a fair amount of dust. It's not good to inhale it. Repeat the process several times, ensuring all flowers are covered. Try not to flatten the flowers too much, as it may affect the final appearance. This process requires patience and time. Slowly sift the desiccant, taking care to include the small flowers along the edges. 
you can gently shake it to balance and adjust the flowers. As long as the desiccant covers all the flowers, you can start placing the second layer of flowers. Utilize the space wisely, and in smaller areas, you can add smaller flowers. We also need to arrange the flowers, leaving some space between them. Now start sifting the second layer using the same method, slowly filling the space by sieving. This tool is very useful and I highly recommend everyone to make one. If you have a flower sifter at home, that works too. Just make sure to clean it thoroughly after use. Let's sift one more time to ensure all these flowers are fully covered. Similarly, you can give it a little shake to even out the flowers and then you can start adding another layer of the desiccant. This should be the last layer because the height just allows for three layers. Additionally, this layer can only accommodate smaller flowers. If flower seems too big, let's change to a smaller one. Now, save the final layer of desiccant over the flowers. Please pay attention to the petals in the corners. You can see we are almost done. Finally, fill any remaining visible areas of the flowers with desiccant. At this point, everything should be well covered. At this point, you can gently balance and shake it. Now the flowers are completely covered and you cannot see any edges. Remember to check if any edges are exposed. If there is a small amount, it's okay, but if you can see an entire petal, you may need to cover it again with desiccant. Our flowers are almost done at this point. Finally, cover it with a sealed lid. This concludes the process of drying the flowers. Next, we need to wait for approximately 3 to 5 days until it's completely dried. Now, depending on this situation, if the indoor humidity is relatively high, we may need to dry for an extra day or two. However, under normal circumstances, around 3 to 5 days should be sufficient. Afterward, store it in a cool and clean environment. The remaining flowers were not wasted. I stored them in an extra large box for drying. Now let's wait for 3 to 5 days together and look forward to the finished dried flowers. Okay, after 5 days, the dried flowers are now ready. Today let's witness their new appearance. When taking out the dried flowers, it's best to prepare a relatively large container. This way we can pour the desiccant into it. And it's more convenient to find the dried flowers in the larger container. Then uncover the lid and now you can begin the treasure hunt. We can slowly pour out a layer of desiccant. And at this point, the flowers will gradually become visible. You can see that the flowers have retained their original shape while pouring, if you notice small flowers, you can take them out. Then, turn to the other side of the box and gently pour out another layer of desiccant. At this point, you can see more smaller flowers appearing. The color of the smaller flowers has been preserved very well. You can see that compared to before drying, the color has only slightly faded, but the shape remains unchanged. Now let's take a look at the effect of the larger flowers. When just taken out, there may be a slight whitening due to some desiccant on the surface. You can use a small brush to gently sweep it away or simply blow on it. It will restore its original color. Next, let's take a look at this smaller flower. You can see that its dried shape hasn't changed much from the beginning and it feels very crisp when pinched. There is also some very small flower. You can gently shake it to remove any excess desiccant. The flower stems we left earlier are now playing a role. You can pinch the stems and gently shake them, making the flowers very clean. Please be careful with the handling. Handle them with utmost care, gently picking them up and placing them down. 
Let's take a look at the shape and the color of this flower. The drying process has been very successful. Then, continue to pour and more and more flowers are revealed in the process. The shape of this dried rose has been perfectly preserved as well. Let's check the back of this flower. It has also dried perfectly. When there is only a small amount of desiccant left in the box, you can pour it all out. Now let's find the remaining flowers. Look, the flowers are in perfect condition and have retained their shape. This is because we used a sieve to pour the desiccant and were very careful when handling them. Only some heavier petals may be prone to falling off with a slight touch. But we try our best to be careful and preserve their original appearance. We can take a closer look or gently spread them and you can still see some tiny remnants of the flowers. Let's take a closer look at the petals. The optimal drying time is usually around 5 days. If it dries for too long, the petals may become wrinkled due to excessive dryness. If the drying time is insufficient, the flowers may become limp and there is a risk of mold in the final product. Let's take a close look at the drying effect. You can see that the texture is very clear. Dried flowers should be used as soon as possible. If not used immediately, it's advisable to store them in a sealed container. If left for too long time, the flowers may fade and they could become limp and deformed. Alright, that concludes the all steps for drying flowers. Next, let's use the dried flowers to create beautiful resin crafts. This video serves as an introduction to the reasons behind issues like obvious division lines in resin, cloudy resin, and part of the resin that doesn't fully cure, bubbles and flash cures, and fading and melting issues during the resin crafting process. It also includes examples of finished products. Question 1. Obvious division line in resin. In the process of making resin crafts, there can be a noticeable dividing line. This craft is divided into four layers. Although each layer is transparent, you can still clearly see the division lines. There are two reasons for this situation. The first one is that we did not use the same batch of resin. For making small sphere, we typically need about 250 mm of resin. If we switch to different batches of resin during the process, division line can occur. The other reason is that the ratio of the resin may differ. The right ratio of the regular epoxy resin is 1 to 1 by volume. For example, if we pour 4 oz part A, then we need another 4 oz part B. It will have division line if you mix 3 oz part A and 5 oz part B. Please remember these two points. We can choose the appropriate volume of resin based on the size of the work we want to create. If we are working on a large project, it is advisable to use a larger volume of resin. This ensures the use of the same batch of resin, preventing the occurrence of the division line when pouring the resin in layers. Question 2. Cloudy resin. The phenomenon of resin becoming cloudy may occur during the production of resin works. In this crafted piece, a discernible contrast is between the initial and uppermost layers of resin. However, the intermediate resin layer appears markedly turbid. The emergence of this situation stems from inadequate mixed resin. Crafts made from well-mixed and bubble-free resin look super clear. If the resin isn't mixed thoroughly, we'll end up with lots of silky boundaries in the resin, making the craft look cloudy. Question 3. Part of the resin doesn't fully cure. During the crafting process, you might notice that some parts of the final crafts have already been cured, but there are still some parts that haven't been cured yet. We can see that this area is actually a bit soft. Pressing it down might even make it bounce back. You can see that the resin is actually quite clear in the bottle. 
What could be the reason for some parts not curing properly? It's actually because we missed the resin clinging to the sides of the cup during the mixing process. We didn't mix that part with the mixing stick, so it's actually unevenly mixed in certain areas. Now, let's do a resin pouring demonstration to pinpoint the reasons. We use it as a mold, then pour the resin into it. When we use resin, we usually pour the entire cup to make sure no waste. Following the principle of not wasting, some people might use a mixing stick to scrape any resin clinging to the cup's walls. Exactly, because that scraping action removes the resin stuck to the walls that won't mix properly, leading to part of the resin doesn't fully cure. Now, let's scrape off the resin from the bottom of the cup and take a look. We can see there are some silky boundaries in the resin. The resin at the bottom is clear, but the resin we scraped off from the cup's walls is cloudy. This situation occurs because of the scraping action we just did, so it's important to be aware of this knowledge point. Question 4. Bubbles in flash cure In the process of crafting, there might be flash cures or lots of small bubbles. This usually happens because we didn't pour the resin in layers. Pouring all the resin at once can lead to the bubbles inside our craft not being expelled, resulting in a flash cure. We recommend pouring resin into this relatively large mold in four layers within 0.5 cm. Exceeding this amount might increase the risk of resin flash cures. Question 5. Fading and melting issues. The upper half of the sphere is mostly turning brown, while the bottom remains somewhat red. This is because we pour the resin in layers. We can see a distinct line here and it's due to the upper half resin in a higher temperature and a lower temperature for the bottom half. Resin with higher temperature not only generates a lot of bubbles but also causes discoloration in the flowers and leads to irreversible issues like melting with the fillings. It's good to know that lower half of the flowers and leaves maintains better color and there are fewer bubbles. So it's essential to ensure that the resin temperature stays below 35 degrees Celsius during this process. Before placing the flowers, it's essential to pour a layer of resin to secure them in place. Then you can proceed to pour the rest of resin. If you place the flowers first and pour resin afterward, the resin might displace and scatter the flowers. Now, let's mix the resin. When making a table, it's best to use an electric resin mixer for resin mixing. Since the mixing cup has a larger capacity, it saves time and effort when mixing larger amounts of resin. The resin we choose is 1 to 1 regular epoxy resin. Just cover the lid and press the button for automatic mixing. It's fast and has a substantial capacity of 24 ounces, which is enough resin to pour one layer of the table. If you have multiple machines, running them at the same time can be highly efficient. As the mixing process continues, the resin has transitioned from initially cloudy to gradually becoming clear. The resin we use for making the dried flower table should be allowed to sit until deforming is complete before use. We can observe there are many bubbles in the resin, but these bubbles will slowly rise to the surface and disappear. Once the larger bubbles have disappeared, it's time to start pouring the resin into the mold. Let's pour the first layer of resin. This layer is meant to secure the flowers, so it should be relatively shallow, probably around 0.2 to 0.3 cm. If the resin is too deep, the flowers might float. You can arrange the flowers according to your preferences. Daisies can be placed freely and adding some leaves can enhance the vividness of arrangement. Please wait for the first layer of resin to cure before pouring the second layer. This ensures that the position and condition of the flowers are fixed and won't be disrupted by the resin. It's also important to place the unused flowers in a sealed box. This helps isolate them from humid air preserving their dryness and preventing them from becoming soft or moldy. Once the first layer of the resin has cured, you can proceed to pour the second layer. For each subsequent layer of resin, it's important to maintain a thickness of around 0.5 cm. If it exceeds this height, 
there is a risk of flash cure or the presence of numerous small bubbles. Now we can start pouring the second layer of resin. Keeping the depth within 0.5 cm should prevent flash cures. After pouring the second layer of resin, it's a good idea to cover it with a lid to prevent dust from getting in. Now we've reached the third layer of resin. This layer should also be around 0.5 cm. At this point, most of the flowers are covered by resin, leaving only a bit of the stems. Next is pouring the fourth layer of resin, which is the final layer. In this situation, where the flowers are already covered, there's less risk of flash cures and bubbles, so you can pour a bit more resin based on your need for the last layer. Now it's time to wait for the resin to fully cure. We can see that the last layer of resin has hardened, and the flowers are completely sealed within the resin. When tapping it, the resin has become completely solid. Next, it's time to demold. Before demolding, give the side of the mold a gentle twist to loosen it up a bit. Let's take a look at the finished product. The boundaries of the resin layers are not very apparent. The colors of the flowers are well preserved, and even the shadows of the flowers are visible in the light. Taking a closer look at the flowers, both the color and shape are nearly perfect. Finally, just attach the table legs and we are ready to use the table. So much for today's video. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumb or a comment. Thanks for watching and see you next time.